Hey YouTube, Bob here. Welcome to World of Nintendo. I've got a lot more content like this on the way, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know what you think. Here we go! In this edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be taking a look at the Family Computer Data Recorder released for the Famicom in Japan in 1984. And this was kind of a uh, companion peripheral to the Family Basic Keyboard and cartridge with uh, software on it so that you could actually program in BASIC on your Family Computer or Famicom. The data recorder was not only used for BASIC, however, it was also compatible for games that had a save feature, such as Excite Bike. Excite Bike on the Famicom, uh, as you may or may not know, let you create your own custom tracks. There was no battery backup memory in that cartridge, though, so you would record your, uh, your tracks onto the cassette tapes here for the, uh, with the data recorder. Strangely enough, the cartridge version of Excite Bike released in the uh, in the United States as a black box game left all the save and load features of the game intact, but there was no way to save or load games because there was no data recorder released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States. But that was okay. I remember still having fun creating custom tracks in Excite Bike, even though I couldn't save them. But uh, this uh, particular peripheral has a uh, little bit of a different aesthetic. Typically we have a red and silver motif going on to match other things released for the Famicom. This one has more of a red and white aesthetic, which actually kind of matches the, uh, the colors of the system itself. It had that maroon color on the bottom and the off-white color on the top. But this happens to be model number HVC008, and the keyboard peripheral was HVC007. If you haven't yet seen that video, um, I would recommend taking a look for it in the, uh, the Nintendo Unbox playlist. It is the Family Basic Keyboard. But here we have in Japanese letting you know what's included in the box. You get your uh, tape recorder. You get uh, two cables here uh, that will allow you to transfer data uh, to this from your Famicom. And uh, then you also get a sample cassette tape. Looking at the packaging here, this is kind of a uh, cardboard uh, slip cover around a styrofoam block or tray that uh, houses all of the, uh, all of the components. So on the, uh, the long end here, we've got the data recorder branding on red with some text in Japanese. Nothing on the sides, just styrofoam and then a repeat on the other long slide, on the other long side. So if we slide off the cover here, this is the block. Little cardboard retainer piece there. Looks like we have our manual, the data recorder, the sample cassette tape, and then underneath that, the cables for data transfer. So let's take a look at the manual. Data recorder. So, let's see. Data recorda. Family computer. And then that's the kanji for Nintendo. On the back, not too much. Open up the manual here. Lots of text with a table of contents here. A photo kind of diagram explaining what all of the buttons do on the cassette player. And not only could this record data, but it could also play music. If you had music cassettes, it would definitely play those. So it's actually kind of a nice build to it. Uh, very solid. We'll probably see that when we take a look at it. This would run on four AA cell batteries, or you could buy separately a 6-volt um, uh, adapter there to power the unit. But it did require separate power. Diagrams for how to make the connections with your save and load cables, how to insert the cassette, how to make recordings using the condenser mic. I'm not sure why you would do that uh, as far as any game mechanics would go for saving and loading data, but maybe they're just giving you general instructions for how to use this as a cassette recorder, both uh, playing audio cassettes and recording voice using the condenser microphone. Using the volume, how to cue cassette tapes, 
how to clean the head on the cassette player. Just a solid page of text, no clue there. This appears to be some sort of a warranty registration. And then just some consumer information. And two blank pages. So that's the instruction manual for the data recorder. We take out this little cardboard separator piece. And there's a hole in the bottom you can use to push the recorder up. You can take it out. And for collector's purposes, if you want to pick one of these up, it did come in this, uh, this very thin uh, plastic bag. So take a look at the data recorder itself last. Only two other pieces in, uh, included in this package. You've got uh, your cassette. This says um, Sun Pu Ru Pora. Uh, Guramu. Okay, uh, sample program. Sample program, and then it has a three after it. So this is just kind of like a sample program that you could load up. Not really sure what was contained on this. Maybe one day I'll take a look at that. But uh, interesting uh, thing I've never seen here before in the United States. This cassette has a stopper in it, I guess, to keep the reels from moving. I don't know why you would want to do that, but um, put this in to keep the reels from moving. And then the only other thing included in the data recorder were the cables. Got a red and a black. They're exactly the same. Uh, just to make sure that you're ma uh, making the red to red connection and the black to black connection. But uh, you could reverse them if, if you wanted to. There's no difference in uh, how these cables actually worked. But I'll show you on the data recorder itself where they would plug in. And then there would be similar ports on the uh, family computer keyboard. But you could have the two interface there. But if you take the data recorder out of its bag, we see a similar uh, color motif here. We've got the maroon color that was on the bottom of the Famicom. And then the off-white color was kind of relegated to the buttons here. But on the top, this whole portion here is the speaker. Got the microphone for making uh, audio recordings, and then all the standard uh, playback and record features, as well as cueing. We've got uh, the eject, and if the play was engaged, this button would also serve as a pause to temporarily stop the playback or the recording. Stopping the playback, rewinding and fast forwarding, and then the large play button there. On this panel, we've got the, uh, the DC in from your AC adapter, and then these are the ports here where you would plug in your cables. So you can do load and save. Doesn't matter if you use the, or, uh, the red or the black in either, uh, either input here or output, just so long as they match the, uh, the counterpart on whatever, uh, whatever other device you're using with this. And we've got a uh, volume slider here. On this side, there isn't really anything of note, nor on the back. On the bottom, though, we've got a little bit of a vent. And then there is the compartment for the four AA batteries. And if you thought the Nintendo GameCube was the first piece of Nintendo hardware to sport a handle, you would be mistaken because the data recorder was sporting a handle all the way back in 1984. So just a quick little demonstration here of how you would insert a cassette. If you've never had any experience with audio cassettes, this, is, this was a, um, a mainstream way of listening to pre-recorded music back in the 70s and 80s. And I worked at a record store starting in 1998, and we still sold cassettes. They were very popular because at that time, that is what people had in their cars. Cars had cassette players, so if people wanted to listen to music in their car, they usually bought it on cassette, and we sold lots of audio cassettes, even as late as 1998 and 2000. But this is the cassette. You insert it here, push it down, and then close the lid. And then you push play, rewind, fast forward, stop, or pause to eject it. Kind of a mechanical, uh, uh, mechanical mechanism uh, going on there. Kind of pops the cassette out for easy retrieval.
but there you have the family computer data recorder. Not a very exciting peripheral in and of itself because it just served uh, for save and load features, but before the disk system for games like Excitebike and surely for uh, things like the family basic game, you definitely needed the data recorder. Hope you enjoyed this unboxing, and please do stay tuned for several other unboxings and other content I have coming at World of Nintendo. Take care.